Hi, and welcome to Screens and Focus Podcast, where we share and connect as we spotlight our favorite shows and movies. Today's episode will be on Fear the Walking Dead, Season 6, Episodes 12 and 13, along with other TV and movie recommendations. I'm Diana, and I have a very special guest co-host today sitting in for Brooke. We've been friends for a very long time, and we share our love of the Walking Dead universe. So I'm really excited to welcome my friend, Debbie. How are you, Debbie? Hi, Diana. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I am thrilled to have you here. I'm so happy. We have been such fans of the walking dead for so long and i told you debbie you have to watch this and you said okay diana i will (laughs) yeah i i still think back when you introduced me to the show i hadn't seen it yet or knew anything about it and um you spoke about michonne with her sword and rick and uh all the other characters and uh and then every uh monday you text me what do you think what'd you think and then we text back and forth and (laughs) yes we yeah it's been great Okay, so I was thinking about our question of the day, and in episode 13, it is entitled JD, which is John Dory's initials. So it got me to thinking how many people go by their middle name or their initials or they have a shortened name. And so I want to know, are you referred to by your full name, a nickname, or both? Well, you know, I'm just kind of a plain old Debbie. (laughs) Although when my parents used to get angry, they'd call me Deborah. So I go by Debbie. Yeah. Yeah. That's my preferred. Yeah. Although I always wanted my mom to call me something more exotic, but I'm a Debbie. Yeah. I love it. (laughs) Oh, thanks. And what about you? For me, yes, I've mostly always gone by Diana. And uh, I did work at a place one time where I went by my initials. I was known for five years as DL. Uh, so it was, it's kind of funny. And sometimes people will call me by my last name also. You've been called by your last yeah. name, too. Yes. So I think that's pretty common, but yeah. it's kind of cool, too. Actually, you're right. When I was uh, an athlete when I was younger, and they always said, hey, Tori, hey, yeah. Tori. Yeah. <laughs> Get over here, Tori. I know. I love it. Especially in sports, it tends to happen. They call you by your last name. That's so cool, Deb. Okay. So, friends out there, we want to know, are you referred to by your full name, nickname, or both? You can leave us a comment on Twitter at in underscore screens or at our Screens and Focus Facebook page. You can follow us on our Instagram, subscribe to our website and our YouTube channel. The link is in our show notes. Okay, Debbie, in Fear the Walking Dead, episode 12, entitled In Dreams, we see Grace in this dreamlike environment full of these beautiful pink trees where she meets 16-year-old Athena and old Morgan. Of course, we know something is up, but we aren't sure what it is, and as Grace tries to piece things together, so do we. I want to know what you thought of this episode or what stood out to you. Well, I really liked it. I liked the dreamy visual and the pink hues. Uh, I thought it was quite effective. And plus, uh, to me, it was nice to see Grace in a different role. Um, She seemed younger and spirited. And I guess she was cleaner than normal. You know, they all have dirt on their faces all the time. I did like how the writers depicted the stories or her spiritual connection she felt she had with Morgan. I hadn't felt that before. So I really liked that. You know, I agree with you on her character being highlighted and how she is as an actress. Like, I feel like we haven't seen her like this before. And I really liked it. Yes. Yes. I was heartbroken by the end of this episode. Fear has been pretty emotional this whole second half of the season with losing John and June coping with the repercussions and Daniel's mental state and Alicia and Wes dealing with those underground people. And now we have Grace. I thought that everything Grace was feeling and sensing was exactly how the storyline was going to go, that she was going to die. And Athena was going to live and be the key to uniting the different communities by giving them the common goal. So I was trying to come to grips with losing Grace, and I didn't like it. 
I know that the Walking Dead universe is really good about highlighting characters that are about to die or leave the show. So I was prepping myself. But then at the end, they totally flipped the switch and her baby doesn't live. And it was shocking. I was shocked. I was, and of all days, it was on Mother's Day. I'm like, really? Fear the Walking Dead, you're doing this now? This is terrible. Yes, yes. Yeah, and, and my mind was swirling at the same time, uh, feeling the blessing and loss of a baby. And I think this is the first time they've actually showed a, a dead baby. I know. And and I'm so glad they didn't make it a zombie. But oh that, my that might have been kind of funny in a way, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing, but... <laughs> oh, my God, I didn't even think about that, yeah, Debbie. Yeah. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Yes, I'm glad they didn't go yeah. that route. You are so <laughs> right. Holy But crap. But prior to all that, I, I thought I had to watch it a couple of times back, you know, go back on the uh, remote when... Grace walked up to Morgan and she touched him and, and he, the way he pulled his arm back and that look on his face, it's so funny. You have to go back and take a peek at that. But yeah. uh, I thought Morgan acted that little scene really well. And, um, you know, and I was surprised that he didn't recognize her. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was yeah. like, what? How do you not recognize Grace? Yeah. Uh, she That's the last you saw her. Well, yeah, that was the last you saw her. So I would think she would be recognizable to yes. him. So before the the when they showed us that the baby had passed, I kept thinking Grace died and the baby lived, hence we see Athena mm-hmm. and maybe she was in a, a you know in a fit fitful spirit and needed to come back to have closure. So that that was going through my mind as well throughout the um the episode. Yeah. So I'm also thinking about these underground people that are now in possession of the key because Morgan ends up giving it to them because Grace is adamant that they don't need it because Athena will unite them and, you know, help them all fight this new villain. And so she says, just give it to him. It's, you know, we've got the key here. And so he does. And now they're off with the key that, you know, will start or... I don't know how it works with the warheads, nuclear warheads, yeah. but turning that those two keys. Well, and during those scenes, uh, they were showing them as zombies. So I, I was a little confused in the in where she was having the pains locked in that shed or wherever they were in that warehouse, and so were they real? And he really gave them the key. Yeah, I think okay. that for okay. sure he gave them the key. I really do. All right. And I know uh, I thought it was really good watching the underground people as zombies. And I think it was because <laughs> she was in that coma state, knocked out, whatever she was. And so she was sensing they were there. So it was incorporated uh-huh. into her dream. And I think in her dream, they were zombies. But in real life, they were fighting Morgan because he kept trying to get her awake so that he could move yes, her yes. as they were coming in. So I'm sure she must have sensed that urgency that yeah. Morgan was having. So Papa Morgan gave him the key and they got out of there. Yeah. <laughs> Debbie, did you have any other thoughts or tidbits on this episode? Oh, yeah. Actually, uh, I did like the scene where when they were walking down the uh, road, that one walker kept it was repeating the walker coming towards yeah. her. I, I thought that was pretty clever. Yeah. Yeah. And then I totally love the Roy Orbison song and music in this episode. You know, he his music and his guitar strumming and the melody, it just pulls you in. And I just thought it was just perfect and beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I really liked Athena. I thought she played that part well. And... Um, you know, Morgan Spawn, she was a great little actress there while she lasted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, you know, it's just interesting to see uh, what could have happened or her, how her dream seemed so real at times. Oh, that's right. And I also liked when Grace was in a labor pain and fell to the ground. And then Athena, about five feet away, was withering, you know, in pain or yeah. like also going through the the labor pain with her. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, it was pretty, pretty I thought that was very well done as well. So one part, I'm kind of being picky, I guess, but the tape recorder. 
I just can't see that it would last 15 years in that environment. Exactly. So, you know, that's, and the song isn't warped or, or the tape breaking. Right. Exactly. Without, without another piece of tape to hold it together. Yeah. <laughs> or how it could last battery, yes. with batteries yes. or with a connection. And she's walking around with it, so it has to be batteries. <laughs> yeah. Unless they're finding keep finding batteries all over the, as they go along to, through all the stores or supplies. Well, don't batteries have a ten year shelf life? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I yes, I love the beautiful pink flowers, and I thought about the CGI that must have gone into doing this whole episode, and I hadn't thought about that, and that was just goes to show how much production, uh, post-production, they work on this and how beautiful that was. Uh, It was just gorgeous. And I, too, thought Athena was a great actress, and it's kind of a bummer that she won't be able to be on again. And I loved the walkers, like you had mentioned, how they kept, the same one kept coming at her and they kept killing, killing them. And, oh, and I really liked seen Stran and Daniel as old men buddies yeah. getting along. So I'm like, oh, they, they're getting along. That's so cool. And also Sherry and Dwight, they have two kids. And it was nice that they were together. So it was just, I loved seeing that part of everything being so nice. But then it, it's not really the future. So that was kind of a bummer. Yeah, yeah I really liked um Strand and Daniel's part, their uh, characters. Yeah. I would like to see more of them, actually. Yeah. <clears throat> and then, of course, the Roy Orbison song. I had noted that I really appreciated that, too. And I love that the Walking Dead universe always incorporates songs into their episodes. And they always have... Uh, a lot of times I don't know the songs. And I go look up the songs because mm-hmm. I've seen it. And then... I learn about a new artist, and I love it. I really do love it. Yes, so, I'm um, with you I on that. I think it's it's so good that they highlight these or other artists that we aren't aware of, and some that we are, mm-hmm. and maybe younger people who don't know Roy Orbison will, you know, check him out. Yeah, that would be great. Highly recommend it. <laughs> okay, so in episode thirteen, entitled JD. We meet a new character that I'm really excited about. We also learn more about John Dory's past. We learn a bit about Teddy and his past. Uh, We see how some of the characters are dealing with grief and loss and past traumatic experiences and how they're coping and evolving. All in all, I thought this was a really emotional episode. So many of these latest ones have left me in tears, and I would love to know from you, Debbie, what you thought of this episode. Yeah, uh, this episode was amazing, I thought, um, really kind of heavy emotionally. And I'm glad June finally read that darn letter and she almost lost it. Yeah. But um, and uh, plus, I'm glad Morgan clarified Grace is alive because Mm -hmm. I was still confused at the end of the last episode. And I loved the character J.D. Uh, I thought it. I thought it was really nice to have a little more backstory on John, John Dory, whom I miss a lot. Yeah. Um, And I loved the intensity of John Dory Sr., his obsession with finding and tracking the bad guys. And boy, his uh, motorhome was just packed with pictures and maps. And so I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. And I'm not sure if he was also trying to find his son, but... uh, as I went through it, I got lost in the emotion of it and kind of forgot. Maybe you can clarify that for me. But I actually did shed a few tears myself when she mm-hmm. was reading the letter mm-hmm. and how he forgave his father. And yeah, it was, oh, and I loved how they interacted with each other, June and JD Sr. I, I thought they were very well together. Yeah. Yeah. And then I also really liked that June gave Dwight her rings for them, for uh, Dwight and Sherry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you think? Oh, I loved all those moments. Those were so good. I'm not sure if JD Sr. was actually looking. I don't think so. I don't okay. think he was looking for him. I don't know. Maybe he hoped in the back of his head. Um, I really love this episode for so many reasons. Yes. Keith Carradine is such a cool pick to play John Dory Sr. Yes. 
When June located that RV and went inside and he spoke with her about an investigation, something hit me and I thought for a moment, wow, John Dory's dad was a cop. Could this somehow be his dad? And I 100% thought that. That's crazy. And then he sees the gun with his initials JD on it and says it belongs to his family. My mind was blown. (laughs) I was like, it was a good thing the commercial came. Well, for me who has commercials, it came and I was like, what? <laughs> I'm like, it's so weird because that fleeting moment of, could this be his dad? But I really didn't think it would be. It's just something that went through my mind and then it was. I'm like, what? That's cool. But I was automatically saddened because I couldn't help but think if only their paths had crossed just a few days or weeks earlier. I'm not sure how much time has passed, but I thought, how could you have missed your loved one by just those, that small amount of time when it's been 40 years? And I just thought that was, and even though it's not true, (laughs) all of this is just made up in my heart. I was thinking, you missed your son and he missed you and you guys could have seen each other. That is amazing that you thought that. I'm surprised I didn't. I, I loved hearing you say that. Yeah. Wow. So yes. I was touching. Like, no. Oh. So it felt like a huge loss to me. This episode is one of the first that I did not need to watch again so I could figure it out. I really enjoyed it. So I watched it again because I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was so good. Yeah. So, you know, speaking of Sherry and Dwight, um, I Sherry to me is so conflicted and, and, and fractured. She, I guess maybe kind of like Morgan was at one point or Carol along in the Walking Dead. Uh-huh. You know, and I am thinking, girl, make up your mind. You've got a husband here, even yeah. though I can't stand looking at his face. But I really like his character. But I, I feel bad for her. But I'm, I kind of was happy when they rode off, you know, at the end. But boy, yeah. the way she shot that horse and uh, just back and forth and back and forth. It, she's poor thing. She's just got a lot of angst in her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I agree. I was surprised that Sherry was so willing to leave Dwight Uh, for most of this episode. And when he talked to her about how much John and June saved him and saved his life, Mm -hmm. that really hit me emotionally. I I got teary-eyed on that part. In fact, I might have had tears because I thought to myself, you almost gave up your life for her, but they brought you back and you're telling her this, but she still wants to leave. I didn't like that. I'm like, no. (gasps) But I have to say, I, I really like and appreciate this changed version of Dwight. I did not like him on The Walking Dead. What he had done to Daryl and the others... But on fear, he has been such a good guy and such a changed man. And he really values his relationships and his friendships, that friendship he has with Al, the friendship he had with John and June. I feel it. I just feel like he's such a good guy now. And I love that. What I was happy to see at the end of this episode, when June read that letter, and I too had tears flowing down my cheeks. And I really felt her pain. I thought she played it beautifully, Jenna Elfman. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, if this doesn't get through to Sherry, I don't know what will. But in the end, it did ring true for her. And I was happy that she shifted her mindset. Because Mm -hmm. also for her, she needed to release that gnawing pain that she had that she was carrying around. Because you can't carry that around. That's going to eat you up. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that she saw that. In John Dory Sr. and didn't want that for herself. Yes. So that yes, was really yes. cool. I really liked it. And I was really happy that they gave us that episode to grieve John Dory. Yes. And I felt like I was living through June at that moment. The way she cried was so genuine. Yeah. It was exactly how someone would react reading that and their loved one has passed that you just love so much. Oh, my God. It was such a good episode. Yes. yes. Well, she never really had a chance to grieve. No. So, so yeah. this was perfect mm-hmm. for her because mm-hmm. this may put her on a better path. Yes. Having gone through this. You know, um, 
I'm bringing this up early because I just want to, it just came to my mind was that seeing her perspective on Dakota, because I have to tell you, I, I wanted nothing to do with Dakota. In the last podcast episode, uh, we had talked about why is she walking around with no shackles? Why is she not in jail? How are they just allowing her to run free? I thought the same. But to see June not really placing 100% of the blame on her, but really because it was Ginny, because Ginny modeled that behavior for Dakota. So I feel as though June really isn't blaming Dakota for it, which I find really shocking. Mm, I thought that's why she wasn't coming around to the community. And I don't know that that's it now, but I'm hoping June can heal at this point. What other thoughts did you have on this episode? Well, the reason we watch the show is because of zombies, walkers, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I was pretty stoked at some of the bloody, gory walker scenes, especially the one under the RV and just that one in the beginning, that noise when that state goes through the, the first one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and I remember many years ago when you, again, when you introduced me to this show, you said, well, don't eat dinner while you're watching the movie. So what do I do? I go home, get my dinner ready, sit in front of the TV. <laughs> I take a bite and I'm like, oh. <laughs> but you know, I still love it. It's a love hate relationship with these zombies yeah. but, and these walkers. But I love them. The grosser they are, the better. I know <laughs> that walker underneath the RV was crazy. Yeah. All its intestines around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh my God, that was so, well, now it's funny, but it kind of was funny at the moment too, because I don't get too grossed out by the walkers anymore. The only thing that affects me is when something happens to one of the humans, the oh, people, yeah, yeah. but the walkers themselves, I'm like, yeah, okay. But it, it just cracks me up and all the, the extent they must go through and putting them together <laughs> yeah. and having these things happen yeah it's just very cool so yeah that was a good um a good <laughs> all the walkers were really good and that scene yeah. was especially good yeah i was really surprised with morgan in the beginning i didn't like the way he talked to june i was like what why are you talking to her like that well i I did not feel that way. I think Morgan is an incredible actor, and I've always enjoyed his character, uh, even in his weaker <laughs> episodes or you know, in, in The Walking Dead and also Fear. Yeah. But I think uh, he's grieving and maybe had to blame somebody. Um, and then June is grieving, too, although I think she handled herself really well. Um uh, And it was a tough scene. And, you know, it was a, a good question. Why? And maybe June needed to answer that. Really, why was she there? Was it for her or for Grace? Yeah. So, um, I think I think you're right, and I think she needed that too. But I don't feel like he should have blamed her for the baby's death. You can't really yeah. blame another person for right. something like that happening, because they could have brought Grace to where. June was earlier instead of, yeah, that's you know, true. so that's right. I, I don't know. I did, but I liked at the end where they kind of talk it out and he, it, I feel like they kind of, they made up. And so I really appreciated that. So yeah. I felt like they were, yeah. um, it was good between them at the end. And I'm glad that he said something and, and I glad that she took it as time to reflect on herself and she didn't take exactly what he said to heart. So I was really happy by the end. But I was like, when it was happening, I'm all looking around at the family like, did you just hear that? Because I didn't (laughs) like it. I didn't like it. (laughs) So, um, oh, so this was directed by Aisha Taylor, and she did a phenomenal job. The Walking Dead universe has been has had many female directors, and I love that they always highlight these directors uh, and their efforts. And I just applaud them for doing that. Was this one of her first directing jobs on uh, Walking Dead? I think Fear on Fear the Walking Dead it has been. I, I don't know that 100%, but I haven't heard that she's directed mm-hmm. one before. But then this was uh, on The Talking Dead that I, because because she was on The Talking Dead speaking about this episode, which I loved. 
And she is up to all kinds of things. She's directing all uh, all kinds of shows and has a di- bunch of different projects. So it was really great to see her. Um, and she is so good. She planted so many Easter eggs and said them all on The Talking Dead. And one of them was that some of the zombies paid tribute to earlier episodes. Like in the very beginning when those walkers ran into those spikes that Morgan had back in oh yes. season in, in, on The Walking, Walking Dead, Dead in the earlier mm-hmm. seasons, how he had that as... When uh, he was going crazy. Yes, when he was going <laughs> crazy. Clear. It was clear. so clear. Yes. And so she put the, that in. She also put in at the very end when um, Sherry and Dwight are riding off, that walker that's walking toward them has a leather jacket and barbed wire <laughs> as Negan. I thought oh, that was so cool. At the very beginning, when they showed the eggs and the walker yes, steps on yes. them, that was to signify the baby passing. Oh, I believe that's how, what she said. So I was, was wondering about yeah, that. Yeah, so there was just a lot mm. of little things paying tribute to all different episodes and, and the show. And yeah, there was quite a few others. So she was, she's like a major fan. So I think to direct this episode was something, you know, really special to her. And the fact that you said how much you loved it, you didn't have to go back and rewatch it, that is oh, attributed yeah. to her direction. Uh, yes. So I just, I hopefully she'll direct some more of oh, these. Yeah. She had also talked about um, the horse scene. And she said that they had this big, um, you know, written up scene of having this drone and, and coming in and how she was going to, it was going to be filmed. But the horse, <laughs> you know, they always say in Hollywood, don't work with animals and don't work with children. And in this case, don't work with horses. She said he wasn't like a dog. He wasn't going to do what you wanted him to do. And he didn't want to lay down. <laughs> they could only get him to lay down for a few minutes. And then he was like, up, like, yeah, I'm done. Where am I going? You know, where's my apple or whatever it was. So they had to film the scene really quick and just get it done and it didn't go how they planned at all so i i thought that was amusing to hear so so, yeah so they think just on the fly there just like me and you debbie here we are recording we were having a little bit of technical difficulties but we got through it and (laughs) um, persevered yeah we did so Well, I'm glad to hear that about the horse because I am really sensitive about animals. Yeah. And just the thought of a horse falling and breaking his leg and then they have to kill it. I I, know. It just just kills my heart. So thank you for telling me about the horse playing dead. (laughs) (laughs) And and she said no animals were harmed in the making of this episode, which I really appreciated. Yes. (laughs) Okay. That wraps up our conversation on Fear the Walking Dead. I would like to know, Debbie, what else are you currently watching? I just finished watching a Netflix series called Colony. And the lead guy, his name is Josh Holloway. He is so hot. So it's been a, you know, it's real fun to watch him. Yeah. (laughs) And his wife happens to be Rick's wife from The Walking Dead, Lori. And she, her character in this show is much, much better. She rocks it. So it's it was actually pretty enjoyable. It was a great show in the future. How I many? De- how many episodes? Um, I mean, how many seasons are there? I think there? there were three. Oh, three. three seasons. Okay, but I think there were like twelve episodes. So um, I, I didn't want it to end. Aww. So I'm, I'm hoping it, they will renew the series. But I d- highly recommend it. Oh, and I know this is old school, but I really enjoy Doctor G, the medical examiner. She is still on. Yeah, if you haven't watched her, uh, she's from Florida, and she does autopsies on dead people. And uh, it's just uh, kind of gross, but she's really good. <laughs> and then on my girly side, I finished The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, and I absolutely love her wardrobe. Although she's bow-legged a little bit, but um, and it, that was a little uh, distracting, but I totally love all of her clothes. And then now I'm uh, currently watching a Netflix series titled Omniscient, and it is a science fiction in the future, and it... Uh, A man was killed and happens to be the father of the two stars, which is his son and daughter. And 
the plot is driven by the fact that in, at this time, little drones follow you around the, about the size of a dragonfly, and they follow you 24-7. Oh, my God. I would not like that. Oh, well, you, you know, the, the young girl who plays the part, she's uh, just the way her facial expression, she looks up at the droid and or the drone, sorry. And the interesting part is uh, crime is really down because it the drones know oh. when you're going to do something wrong, and they kill you instantly. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. So it's like Minority Report. Uh, I haven't seen that. Oh, you haven't seen that no. with Tom Cruise? That's I really no, good. I'm going to have to yeah. watch it. So uh, this movie is uh, foreign, so uh, you can see in there when they move their mouth, it, the words are a little different than what you hear. But otherwise, it's very good, I thought. And it's interesting to see how she maneuvers around these little drones that follow them. Ah. So. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, and then I love uh, Marvel movies, and so I just finished WandaVision. Love that. Yes, yes. So good. Yeah, it was great. Any movies? Are you watching any oh, movies? Uh, well, I actually just finished Without Remorse, and I grew up with all brothers, a lot of men in my life, and I still love action movies. Yes. <laughs> like guys do. Yeah. I thought that actor was so good in this movie. He was very good, just the intensity and his role and his... Of course, is what? Uh, uh, no spoilers, right? So anyway, it's <laughs> well, a great it's at movie. the beginning. So uh, okay. yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, he's oh, that's good. his name. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I loved him. Yeah, and yeah, I'm a little behind actually on movies, but um, that's okay. I'll catch up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is so much out there. Mm -hmm. I started watching a new TV show called Hacks. It's on. HBO Max. It's with Jean Smart. She plays Deborah Vance, a comedy legend with a Vegas show. And they're trying to cut the number of shows down because she's considered older, aging. And her agent pairs her with a 25-year-old down-on-her-luck comedy writer. And they need each other. But they don't get along. So this is a dark comedy. It's getting rave reviews. And Jean Smart is so brilliant, so funny. And she's in everything right now. So I would recommend it. There's only been two mm -hmm. episodes. I think it got 100% Rotten Tomatoes. So Ooh. you can't get any higher than that. So it's been pretty good. There's a new season of Real Housewives of New York on Bravo. Uh, there's a new housewife. Her name is Ebony Williams. I really like her. And finally, there's some diversity. So that's kind of cool. Oh, good. What I have, I've been talking about this next show, I think each time we podcast, but I have to tell you about it again. And I have to share this with you, Debbie. It's called Mayor of Easttown. It's on HBO Max. It is so good. It is my favorite show right now. Everyone needs to watch this. You will not be disappointed. Mm. Kate Winslet is incredible. Jean Smart plays her mom. And in this series, every episode is something big, something pivotal happens. This series has love, loss, mental health, drug addiction, suicide, murder, crime, cover-ups, abuse, secrets, affairs. It goes on and on and on. Whew. So much happens. There's only two episodes left. It is a must watch. So please tune in and watch Mayor of Easttown on HBO Max. Ooh. You will not be disappointed. I just saw the finale of Mayans MC. That's on FX Hulu. Loved it. It was so good. Left me on the edge of my seat. It's that whole crime thing. It's a, it's a, in the universe of Sons of Anarchy. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just finished season three. I don't know when season four will come, but I, I cannot wait. I'm also watching Mosquito Coast on Apple TV. I'd mentioned this in a previous podcast, but it's it's been so good, too. It's with Justin Thoreau and... Um, it's his, him and his family on the run there in Mexico and dealing with all kinds of things. It's a really good uh, series also. So I recommend all those shows. As far as movies, I just watched Greenland on HBO Max. This is an action disaster film with Gerard Butler. It's about a man and his family who are selected to travel to safety as a deadly comet is set to destroy Earth. At one point, his family gets separated and each must face the ugliness of humanity when people are pushed to the brink. 
And mm-hmm. it's the whole apocalypse thing. It's it's the same with uh, The Walking Dead and Fear of the Walking Dead, how people will do all kinds of things to survive. And so this movie was really good. It just, I think, came out on HBO Max maybe one or two weekends ago. So please check that out. I, too, did see Without Remorse. That's on Prime, and I really do like it a lot. So I agree with Debbie and Brooke, who had recommended this. So uh, go watch that. Brooke had also recommended to me Kid 90, which was on Hulu. And this is a documentary by Soleil Moon Fry, who documented her life growing up in the 90s. Many, many Hollywood teens of the 90s are in this documentary. It's actually quite sad to see that so many of them are no longer here. So uh, they're just gone too soon. But it's interesting because Soleil uh, documented from a very young age. She just always had a video camera with her and was always filming everything. This was way before people were doing that. She just had something in her to do this. And so it's kind of cool to see these behind the scenes of her life. So I would recommend that uh, documentary. Debbie, I want to thank you for all your recommendations, all your insights on Fear the Walking Dead. I hope you can join me again in future episodes, but I want to thank you for joining me today. You are very welcome. It was a blast. I loved it. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Thank you so much. And that's our show. Thanks for tuning in. We are grateful you tuned in, and we hope something we said today resonated with you, gave you a chuckle, some happiness, some positivity, or inspiration. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts and tell a friend. We would love more members of our TV club. If you could do us a big favor and rate and review the podcast on iTunes and Stitcher, we need your feedback. We'll be uploading a new episode in a couple of weeks. Next show will be on Fear the Walking Dead, along with other TV and movie recommendations. You can find our website listed in our show notes. See you next time. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.